So, okay. 15 minutes? 15 minutes? <laughs> I won't use that, I hope. Um, first of all, my name is Hugo Bicklund. Um, I come from commerce, from money, and we do analysis. Sorry? Control L. Control L. Better? Thank you very much. Um, I said I'm from um, Energy Quantified. Very, very quick on us. Um, yeah. We are an independent power analysis company. Uh, we were established only six months ago. But I've been working in this field for, let's say, since 99. So we have learned a couple of things. Um, what we do, we quantify what I call stuff that influence the power price. That's our main goal, and that could be anything. And of course, a very important mover of power price would be weather as such. Uh, I'm definitely not a meteorologist. Um, I learned the hard way that from, um, from uh, SMHI's colleagues, among others. Um, but over the years, I, I spent using a lot of meteorology information. Um, so what we do, we quantify everything, for instance, weather into GVH and then priced, basically. And the main product would be provide convenient data and decision support for players in the power business. Um, so my expertise would lean towards how to use the data and whatnot. Um, I was very impressed to see the data available, made available through this project. Uh, however, I can say that already now, I'm a bit concerned how we're going to take this further on and not, it, I would hate to see this die. It needs, it's now when you put it up, the really the hard work starts. You need to, to push this further on. And also, of course, market it to the users. That would be natural. Um, a small flag over here. Uh, we have a um, commercial corporation with SMHI. I could be biased, I could not be biased. It's up to you to decide. Um, a conclusion first, a case study. And I've not been that much involved in the case study as such. I was asked only a couple of weeks back from, um, from Barbara at SMHI to do this. I dived into the project and I was really impressed to see what they've done. Even more impressed yesterday when I saw the, co the full scope of what you've done here. So I, I put it into three main takeaways. Um, first of all, the knowledge that you bring up in this field in inflow. Secondly, that you have made the models and data available. I think there's a tremendous value here for the power community as such. Uh, of course, being a private, uh, a commercial provider of this, I hate to see this data spread around, but I can't. <laughs> But it's up to us to take it and use it better than the others. And uh, I'm very much impressed by the deep academic insight into when they did the combined, let's say, the simulation between inflow and the climatological information. That is the kind of service that uh, businesses like mine could never provide. It's simply too uh, resource uh, demanding. Um, yeah, so a bit about the background. Um, Hydropower, and I call hydropower now because what SMHI has been doing is about inflow, but that's where everything starts. So I will flip a, uh, between inflow and hydropower, but hydropower is really the point here. Um, it's grown out from a, what I would could call a regional phenomenon. I come from Norway where 99% of the hydropower is hydropower. It's kind of bred into us, it's in the backbone. And if it's to that extent that we think this is easy, but it's really not. Um, and now it's been very much more uh, important for the rest of the Europe. And why is that? I'd like to spend a couple of minutes on explaining that. It's mainly because we have a surge in the volatility coming from mainly supply side uh, and demand side as well. You have increased wind and photovoltaic. And you've also been seeing that the market has been commercially linked to each other. So say volatility in, uh, let's say, Germany spread to the surrounding countries. So 
given that they have no idea about solar power, they definitely need to know something about and understand how this works. In fact, if you run a simple price modeling on, uh, let's say, Poland and, and put in solar, you would get a very good fit. That's because the influence of Germany, of course. There's not much solar, in, uh, solar power in Poland. Um, so, long story made short, you need to understand hydropower. Um, but hydro and hydrology, as I mentioned, is uh, it's, it's not that many people that understand this and, and have worked with this. But you can say as an economist, which is my background, um, you should uh, expect invis invisible hand to fix this problem. It's an economic term that, okay, companies should seek up this information and invest in that. But that's not the case uh, for different reasons. Um, there are few hardware-rich countries, so there's not that much competence in this field. Uh, and they most, all mostly know their own value, so to speak, it's a figuratively speaking, but still, if I'm traveling to Austria, they know their own hydrological system very well, but they could be completely in the dark about what's going on in France and Italy and whatnot. And the hydro system, there's difference a lot from the, the Nordic system, where we have not that steep mountains, to the Alpine region, where it's definitely steeper, and the hydrological situation is, is quite different from that, from th those circumstances. So you have a tendency to underinvest in t uh, hydrology. This project helped rem remedy that kind of market flaw, so to speak, if they start using it. So, getting back to speaking a bit more about the two, the three takes away, take away, uh, knowledge. Well, the project, as I see it, contribute to a one common understanding what info is. And from my perspective, that is good, because when I go around talking to my clients, they know what I'm talking about. Uh, they help, this project helps. It gives the authority, so to speak. Uh, so, it reduce what I call the tendency to ex efficiency. I come from that, uh, th that side, so that may or may not mean anything to you, but really ha uh, have an imp uh, importance in how well the market operates. Um, it also facilitates the data. Um, and very hard to come by is the information, where is the info, where is the catchments areas? Uh, that's the bread and butter of that industry, so to speak. Um, if that information would be available, which it now is, it would make it so much easier for these guys to build their own models and understand what's going on. And I'll, I, I plan to bring uh, make a, a, sh a short calculation of how much this, this could simply have saved the power community. But let's say there are would be two or three hundred companies that would be in interest in this com type of information. They would spend in average, half a year each. If they spend a half a year, they wouldn't make it. So they would be in vain. If they spend more, they could make it. Maybe. So make the calculation, even this small information, if they find this information, they will save a lot of time, simply from that perspective. So if there are any doubt about that these actually have a big um, impact on the commercial side, don't doubt that, it has. And it goes beyond that, of course. Um, so yet again, says inefficiency. And then you also have the real data. You can actually go in there and pull out the data. Same argument all over again. Um, it lowers the market, the, the threshold for, mar for more market players. Uh, it brings in more market players into my market, which is good for me, but it also have a tendency to lower the power price, which is good for you. Most of you are most interested in power because what it does and having a lower as possible power price. Um, so it distributes better market signals in effect. Um, better foresight. This goes to the point that where you combine info and climatological information. And it's my claim that uh, I couldn't think of any player in the market, with the exception of maybe 
a couple that have the necessary knowledge base or numeric systems or managerial bravery to do this. It's, it's definitely something you need to do. And it's simply this short, this shift here. This is important to know. Uh, but of course, there's a lot of nuances into this and you have to bring it back. <laughs> and um, there are, when we look at this over the time period that this should be viewed, um, there's uh, definitely, definitely a lot of uncertainty as you have with consumption and also when a lot of things could happen with the system itself that are much larger than this small, that looks like a small shift, but is really not a small shift. Uh, but still, the climatological effect would be there. So how do we use it? Well, uh, in effect, we stand on SMH sh shoulders and this project shoulders. We can move faster, make better informed decisions, and continue to develop further. So this is real money. This is really money for us. Um, so in general, improve our ability to serve our market. Uh, it may seem very dull, but it's really not. This is what the academic sh could do and should do, in my opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention.